In today's video, we're taking apart the front end of the truck. That means taking the front diff out, taking all of the parts and pieces that are part of the front IFS, they all gotta go. And we are prepping this for the part of this project that I've been dreading this whole time. So get out your cutting tools, safety gear, it's time to cut all these IFS brackets off of the frame. I started out trying the sawzall, cut off wheels, but in the end, I ended up using the plasma cutter. I really didn't want to use the plasma cutter because I was worried that it would shoot all that metal all up into the engine bay and melt wiring harnesses and wires and cause all kinds of issues down the road. So this front cross member is the reason why I built the front bumper first. Having that front bumper solid cross member that I built is super important to keep this frame together before you cut out this cross member. So this is a very messy, very time consuming process. I would recommend throwing in some earbuds, listen to a podcast, listen to your favorite music, try and pass the time because this will take a very long time. Once we get this frame all cleaned up, now is the fun part of the project where we can take that front axle, slide it underneath there and start building our front suspension. So I got the axle up underneath here, kind of I'm guessing where I want it, but we're taking a measurement. So we're measuring ball joint to ball joint. So I need to find the center line of this axle. So I measure from ball joint to ball joint, cut that in half, and then I marked the top of the axle on the truss. So if you saw the previous videos, I have the center line of the truck marked in the front, and then I have the center line of the truck marked in the rear as well. And then we got our laser here. So all we gotta do is turn it on and then line up our marks. So that center line of rear, center line of, I'll move this over a little bit and then readjust it. And then we will adjust our front to make sure that it's centered in the vehicle. Uh, these fronts are a different uh, size lug nut. That sucks. So what I'm looking at here is trying to figure out the forward and backwards of the axle. It's centered right now. Obviously we need to move it forward a little bit so that way it doesn't uh, interfere with the inner fender right here. But also I can't put it this much forward because I think it kind of looks silly and I have to cut all this up here as well. So I think I'll probably move it back probably an inch and then we will end up probably trimming the body all the way to the door and then going this line around and then all the way to here so this thing will probably be cut all the way around here um, but we are looking good on the tj spring perches right here are look like they are outside of the frame so our spring perches for our upper uh, spring mount which are right here look like they will work with uh, the TJ, I probably have to modify this a bunch to make it fit on the frame and then add some reinforcement where I need to. But um, let's move the axle back about an inch and then see if it looks a little bit better. So right now guys, what we're doing is we're figuring out full bump of this axle. So this is the track bar mount on the truss. Because we have this big old truss on here, the up travel I'm finding out is gonna be severely stunted, which is totally fine. I'd rather have down travel than up travel anyways. And I'm trying to keep this thing as low as possible. So unfortunately we got to deal with it. What I was doing on the other side was figuring out the tire and how much clearance we have. So. I can't even put the tire on right now because it's running into the body right here. Actually, let's push the axle forward a half an inch and see where we're at. Okay, so this is a half inch farther forward. We are almost touching. Oh yeah, I like that. So we're not touching here, but obviously we're gonna need to trim. So there it is, that's centered up and then I measured the wheelbase. We are at about 127 inches. 
which is five inches above stock. Now, before we start welding brackets onto the frame, this uh, front three link is very similar to the rear three link with basically just one difference. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second. So front three link, like before, we have three links. Uh, because it's not triangular, we have to have a track bar that is gonna center the axle in between the frame where we want it. So with that, as it goes droops down or up, uh, depending on our angles, the axle is going to move side to side slightly. That's one bad thing about having a track bar is the axle as it droops down, it will tend to move side to side, again, depending on the angle you have of your track bar. So over here, we have our axle link separation. We want 25% of our tire diameter, and that is our bolt hole on our upper link and the bolt hole on the lower link. So 25% of a 37 inch tire, we want a minimum of nine and a quarter inch of axle link separation. So this is the difference right here, equal length upper and lower. So because the rear, we're not worried about steering or caster angle or anything like that. So as it goes up and down in its suspension travel, we want that pinion pointed directly at the transfer case at all times because we don't care about steering or caster. That's the, basically the only difference here. So equal length upper and lower arms, there, you're out. You're gone, bud. So typically, depending on how, uh, you, if you drive it on the street mostly, uh, your upper link, you want to have 75% of your lower link. So let's say uh, your lower link is 35 inches times it by 0.75. So your upper link, you want 26.25 inches long. What that does, instead of keeping the pinion pointed at the transfer case at all times, it actually keeps the caster angle, it keeps the pinion in a similar plane. So as it goes down, uh, it doesn't move and change the caster because if you're going over high speed whoops or stuff at high speed and it drops down, your caster angle is gonna change and it's gonna make the steering not feel predictable and not be the same. It's gonna be different. So if you drive it on the street 100%, uh, then you probably wanna have that 75%. So me personally, this is gonna be a hybrid street and uh, off-road rig, and I plan on doing very little to none high-speed off-road stuff where you know my suspension is gonna be drooping and coming up and changing that caster angle a ton i'm going to stick with a little bit less than 75 percent so let's just say for example our 35 inch lower i'll probably stick in around the 30 range so since we deviated from our original list here we'll go back so your lower link you want to keep that about 10 degrees maximum so you can have a little bit of angle in that lower one not a big deal at ride height about 10 degrees where you want to start with and your upper link, you want to keep it as level as possible. And your track bar, you want to keep as level as possible. If you follow all of these rules, uh, your suspension will be just fine. It will work the way you want it. I'm not going to go deep dive into anti-roll, anti-squat, roll center, and all that stuff. If you follow these rules, unless you're building a competition rock buggy or something like that, this is going to do you just fine and you will have no problems. I have the Barnes four-wheel drive parts laid out this is our upper mount that goes on the inside of the frame and this is the lower mount that goes on the bottom of the frame and this one is our lower arm making sure that we're using our left and right hand thread inch and a quarter uh, heim joints with our misalignment spacers and all of our parts right here from barnes four wheel drive We're looking towards the front of the truck. This is the front axle, and this is the front driveline pinion, and then we got our upper control arm mount is right there. So my initial thought is my upper control arm bracket is gonna go right here. I have clearance for my driveline right here. It's gonna be tight, but they will never touch each other. Uh, it has clearance, and I know, because I've put a control arm in here, and I know it works, 
Um, I also notched this out, took some material out of this so I could move this back as much as possible. So right now it's about a 28 inch long upper control arm if I mounted on this side right here. And then once I know the exact length of this upper can be, I can then calculate where my lower mount is going to be, which is not a big deal, but this is the uh, what I have to figure out first. The other option is moving the upper control arm mount to this side, which it would fit on the truss right there, not a big deal, but because the frame angles in so far right here, if I put a control arm up here, it would hit the frame and uh, there's just not enough room. So I can go all the way back and run my upper control arm way back here behind the transmission cross member up right here. This control arm would end up being like 40 to 44 inches long. And that is really long for a control arm. That's a long ways to go to that all the way over there. And then if I do that, then these lower links are gonna have to match and be super, super long as well. And I don't necessarily want that. So this bracket that I modified right here, that normally has a super long curve on it, and it would have had to be like way up here. So I was able to get like two more inches of control arm length by, you know, modifying this bracket in this way. So I'll be able to run a little bit like a two inch longer control arm than I would have if I left this in its stock form. Got a lot of got a lot of room in here. Hey guys, we got our coil buckets in. Everything is looking really good. I like where we're at. Next thing we gotta do is do our track bar mount, which is just gonna go right there. Our track bar is already made, already been measured, and uh, is the correct length and makes all the geometry the way I want it. And uh, the only thing I need to determine is the height in order to make it as level as possible. So this is our track bar bracket for the frame. I'm gonna have to cut it up because obviously it's not gonna fit down in there. So we just gotta clearance everything, make it fit, uh, cut that up and weld that under there so that we can bolt our track bar to it. This is a four and a half inch metal cloak uh, lift spring. This is my starting point. So this will let me know where I'm at. Am I gonna need to get a lower one, smaller one, bigger one, I don't really know yet, but we will find out. So on the driver's side, we had to remove the ABS and the brakes, brake lines, and we're gonna have to redo those. And then we also had to relocate, uh, a reroute the main wiring harness that was on this fender flare. So we're gonna have to do that as well.
Okay guys, the whole truck is on its own weight. It's on the rear springs, it's on the front springs, but you can see that the front is super low. So these are the TJ four and a half metal cloak springs. I'm happy with everything still. It's just, it's literally as low as at full bump right now. Because it's at full bump right now and it's on its own weight, I know that I need to raise it up exactly three inches because that's what I determined my ride height to full bump is going to be. So my options are I can one, cut three inches out of the coil tower or two, cut two inches out of the coil tower and get the five inch or five and a half inch metal cloak springs. Why don't you guys let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I got sick yesterday. I've been struggling all day trying to slam this thing out because I know it needs to get done. I still have to edit this video for tomorrow and I need to get some rest so I can get back at it tomorrow. There's still a ton of work to do, guys. So the track bar bracket is gonna have to get reinforced a ton because it's not angled out on the frame and going to the back side of the frame. I have to make some plates on the back side. We'll go into that in the next video. I just looked at the Metal Cloak website, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna order a six inch spring, the TJ bump stops uh, that I used to have in the TJ. I don't know why, I gave them away to the guy when I sold my front end, didn't think I was gonna use them, but I'm gonna utilize the TJ front bump stop setup off my TJ, it, just cut it off, because I'm not gonna use it in the next version of TJ 2.0, and put it on the front TJ. Basically, this is going to be a whole TJ setup in the front. Uh, <clears throat> TJ coil springs, TJ bump stops, TJ front axle. Well, I guess it's not technically a, a TJ front axle, but it's been modified to work for a TJ. So once I get those six inch springs, I'm going to leave the coil tower exactly the same. The rear is at a point where I'm happy. I know that uh, I like everything where it's at. I can fully build the rear in, fully weld everything in and get that done while I'm waiting for the front springs. Do put the bed on the rear, get the shock set up, all that stuff. Uh, that will take me a week or so to do that. And hopefully I can get the front end, get the hydro assist stuff done and do all that stuff and figure out how much I'm gonna have to cut out of the coil tower with the six inch springs to bring it up to the ride height that I want it to be at. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. If you wanna follow me on social media, I am at MuddyBeards4x4. Got a website, shirt, stickers, stuff like that, MuddyBeards4x4.com. Till next time, guys, we will see you back here in the garage.